Let's go through a few examples from section 6.3, which is equations with multiple angles. We're not going to do everything that's in section 6.3, but I did just pick out a few problems that we can do using the identities and techniques that we already know. Now this is example 2 from section 6.3. It says solve cosine of 2x equals cosine of x over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Now the problem here is that we cannot solve this equation while one function has an argument of 2x and the other function has an argument of x. They need to both have the same argument. The easiest way for us to deal with that is to use one of our double angle identities. And remember, for cosine of 2x, you have three different choices. One is cosine squared minus sine squared. The other is 1 minus 2 sine squared. And then the one we want is 2 cosine squared minus 1. You want to use the 2 cosine squared identity because you don't want to introduce a different function. So we would prefer not to use an identity that's going to introduce the sine function over here. So let's exchange cosine of 2x. So let's exchange cosine of 2x for its identity, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And now you can see that we have a quadratic equation. So the way to solve this is to get all terms on one side of the equal mark and have the other side equal to 0. So I've moved the cosine x to the left side. Now it's negative. And this is now a trinomial, which we can factor. So 2 cosine squared x can be split up into 2 cosine x times 1 cosine x. The last times last is minus 1, so we're going to need a minus 1 and a plus 1. And we just need to make sure that outer plus inner is going to add up to the middle term we need, and it does. And now if this times this is 0, one of our factors has to be 0. If 2 cosine x plus 1 equals 0, we'll get a solution. And if cosine x minus 1 equals 0, we'll get a solution. So let's take that first factor and let's isolate the cosine of x. And we're looking for all x values whose cosine is negative 1 half. Now negative cosines can occur in quadrant 2 and in quadrant 3. And now we need to use reference angles from memory. I know that the angle whose cosine is 1 half is 60 degrees. So I'm going to write in both reference angles as 60. That means this angle will have to be 120 degrees, and this angle will have to be 240 degrees. And now let's take our other factor, which was cosine x minus 1 equals 0. When we isolate the trig function, we have cosine x equals 1 that's going to be a quadrantal angle. And remember, cosine is the horizontal coordinate. So we're looking for all quadrantal angles whose horizontal coordinate is positive 1. That can only happen here, because here the horizontal coordinate is 0, and here it's negative 1, and here it's 0 again. So this is the only one. And now we have to wonder, do we count this as 0 degrees, or as 360 degrees, or both? And that's why we need to look back here. They told us to give all solutions over the interval from 0 bracket to 2 pi parentheses. So we're excluding the 2 pi or the 360 degrees from our solution set. These are coterminal angles and we'll only include the 0. So I'll call this 0 degrees. Now they did specify 0 to 2 pi, that's radians, so I'm going to convert each one of these answers to radians. And so 120 degrees is the equivalent of 2 pi over 3 radians. 240 degrees is 4 times 60, so that's 4 pi over 3 radians. And 0 degrees is 0 radians. And those are our three solutions for this equation. Now let's go ahead and look at number 17 from the same section. This one says solve sine of x equals sine of 2x, again for exact solutions over the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So I'm going to start by exchanging sine of 2x for its double angle identity. And there's only one choice this time. Sine of 2x has to be 2 sine x cosine x. Now this is not strictly quadratic because we don't have a squared term, but we do have two different functions here, and the only way to get them separated is to factor them apart. So let's get all the terms on one side of the equal mark. 
I'm moving this sine of x over here to the right side. And now you can see that I have a GCF of sine x. Let's factor out sine of x. That leaves me with 2 cosine x minus 1 on the inside of the parentheses. Don't lose your minus 1. That seems to be a big problem that people have. They forget that if they factor out sine x, they're going to need a term here. You need to make it so that if you distribute sine x, you can get this expression back. So you can't lose this 1. All right, now, if this times this is 0, one of the factors has to be 0. So let's set each factor equal to 0. And first, we'll take this sine of x equals 0. This is going to be a quadrantal angle. So let's think about the unit circle and try to think of where can we have a sine equal to 0. Well, that's going to be where the vertical coordinate equals 0. That can only happen here and here. So 0 degrees and 180 degrees. And now let's take this second factor and set it equal to 0. When we isolate the cosine x, we're going to get cosine x equals 1 over 2. Now that's a positive cosine value, so that can either happen in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 4. And, and the x value whose cosine is 1 half is 60 degrees, so I've drawn in a 60 degree reference angle. Now this quadrant 1 angle is its own reference angle, so one of our solutions is 60. But the other solution here has got to be 360 minus our 60 degree reference angle. So we're getting two solutions here. We're going to get 60 degrees and 300 degrees. And so now we have four solutions total, and I'll convert each one of them to radians as we go. We have zero radians, and then 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians and then 60 degrees is equivalent to pi over 3 radians, and 300 degrees is equivalent to 5 pi over 3 radians. Remember, this is 5 times 60, so it would be 5 times pi over 3. And that's it. Let's look at one more together. This one says 2 sine of theta equals 2 cosine of 2 theta, and it says find all exact solutions in degrees. Now, I'll start by recopying the equation and I notice that both sides have a coefficient of 2 and there's no reason to hold on to that so let's just right away divide both sides by 2 so those all drop out and we're left with sine of theta equals cosine of 2 theta. Now the same trick that we've used on the other two is what we need here so we need to think about our double angle identity choices for cosine of 2 theta and the one we want to use is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And I'm choosing that one because the other two involve cosines and I don't want to introduce a cosine function since my left side only contains a sine function. Now, just like the first one we did, you can see that this is quadratic. So we're going to want all the terms on the same side. I'm going to move both of these terms to the left side and I'm doing that so that my squared term can be positive. So we're going to have 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. Now let's factor this trinomial into two binomials. 2 sine squared theta is going to be 2 sine theta times 1 sine theta. The signs in our parentheses need to be different and we need to put a 1 times 1. And so I'm going to put plus 1 out here and minus 1 here so that my outer plus inner will add up to positive sine theta. Now, if this times this is 0, one of our factors has to be 0. Now, if this first factor is 0, then 2 sine theta equals 1 and sine theta equals 1 half. Positive sine values can happen in either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. Now, the reference angle whose sine is 1 half is 30 degrees. So in quadrant 1, my angle is 30 degrees. In quadrant 2, my reference angle is 30 degrees, and that means that our theta is 150. So we got two solutions there, the 30 and the 150. And now let's take the other factor, sine of theta plus 1 equals 0. That's going to become sine of theta equals negative 1. So this is another quadrantal angle. We can only have a solution here where the vertical coordinate on the unit circle is equal to negative 1. And that's going to occur here. 
at 270 degrees. So we're getting three solutions here, and now we can leave them in degrees, but they specified that we need to provide all exact solutions. So after each one of these principal solutions, I'm going to add the plus 360N. So 30 degrees plus 360N, 150 plus 360N, and 270 plus 360N. And we should not forget to specify that N is any integer. Remember, anytime you use N, go ahead and write down what N is supposed to represent. That's it. Good luck with these equations, guys. I think if you practice and think about them, spend a little time with them, you'll be able to handle them just fine.